Good day to you all. This is Luminaire speaking. Are you ready? Of course. I don't know who else you'd expect. Um, we, boy, have we got a lot to talk about today. Um, gonna take a little break from this uh, story and do a slight detour and do an aspect of the game I know a lot of people have been asking for. And we're finally gonna jump into the character world today. Um, uh, a, a very important aspect of the game when it comes to maximizing characters and, and make them a lot better. Item world makes items better, character world makes characters better. That better. That simple. Um, huh, where's my mesh screen? Where did I put that? Okay, uh, anyway, uh, update on my systems. Uh, fixed my 360, which I am somewhat amazed by. Uh, the fact that I was able to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Microsoft would have charged at least 100, probably more like 150 bucks or so to repair it. I ended up spending about, uh, maybe 20, $25 for the... Well, for one, to get a elect electrician's screwdriver set, because you know many people have typical screwdrivers for hardware and stuff, but electronics deal with such smaller screws and like a whole bunch of different heads that I've never even seen before. There's like um, you need you need like a special uh, T10 screwdriver and some other T styles, and you know the head is kind of it's kind of shaped like a star as opposed to a, a cross or a simple as opposed to a Phillips head or a, or a simple head screwdriver. Um, so I'm going to reincarnate Arcweed into the Force Knight, I think it is? No, not the Force Knight, the uh, Rune Knight. Yeah, reincarnate, reincarnate again. And um, yeah, reincarnate at least one character up to a maximum, I mean up to a minimum of 100 reincarnated levels. So, you know, if you're level 100 and you reincarnate once, that's either 100 or 99. I'm not sure if it counts because that goes back to 1. Uh, but do that, and then the character world will be available. Although, you might have to pass a bill for it. I can't remember. We'll see shortly. Um, uh, but, yeah, I, I, all I did was the screwdriver set. But if, if I had I had that already, I spent uh, $10 on a very nice... Uh, small little whoa yeah. small little vial of uh, arctic silver high density polysynthetic silver thermal compound or or ashd pstc you remember that acronym uh it, it's 99 percent pure silver uh you know reapply it to the chips reflow the motherboard and then uh take out these horrible designed X clamps uh, and then just you know attach it with some screws and a few washers and then and then uh, reinstate the thing um, PlayStation 3 however that's what I attempted afterwards and um, things aren't going as planned in that regard uh, I think I'm as the problem is, there are a few models to the PlayStation 3, various gigabyte models, and the second problem is, I'm, I'm referring to a number of sources, a few YouTube tutorials, um, a one pretty good site called ifixit.com, and it has picture-by-picture uh, -picture, you know, instructions, but the th weird thing was, the that guy told me to dismantle everything, which was unnecessary, and... Um, Whereas a lot of the videos, I saw some guys doing thermal paste and with keeping a lot more intact to into the system and, you know, removing parts that were still combined to other parts because it was unnecessary to dismantle everything. So, a huge mess. And let me tell you, putting that stuff to get back together is a nightmare. Like, uh, but the biggest problem is these ribbons that connect uh, these cable ribbons. Uh, I... Uh, like, um, 
the, the clamps, you lift up a clamp on the motherboard, and these things are very small in particular. And it just didn't... Ugh, it, it didn't work well. Basically, uh, it's like you, you lift it up and you remove the ribbon, and then when I tried to put it back in, uh, the clamp just wouldn't clamp down. <laughs> So it, it, it would not have maintained a connection. It, it was loose and it easily would have come out, which was real annoying. I'm like, oh, great. Now what the fuck do I do? Which is because, you know, I see some guys. It's like, okay, what did the video tutorial say? The video guys never removed that cable. They never had to deal with this issue. So I'm like, great. Thanks a lot, guide. Make me do unnecessary steps. Um, but, you know, there was a trick. And they said if you uh, wedge a piece of cardboard in between the clip and the ribbon itself, you can kind of use the cardboard to push the ribbon down onto the, I, I, I don't know, into the groove better, and then that will make the, the clip clip, so to speak. Um, so after a few, so after like an hour trying to, of uh, finding out a way to get that to work, I start to reassemble the thing, which is annoying because no two guides reassemble the thing in the same fashion or in the same procedure. You know, there's no one right way to assemble or deassemble a PlayStation 3, it seems. Uh, huh. uh but yeah, I did the. Uh, here, here's the other thing. We, when you have to reflow the chips, um, this en might not end up working anyway because I'm supposed to. They recommend a heat gun, which apparently gets much hotter than I th than I thought. Uh, like it can get anywhere from like 750 to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Apparently, that thing's dangerous. Um, and I was just using a simple hair dryer, and those get what, maybe 250, 300 degrees, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure if I concentrated long enough, I could get the desired result. Um, I mean, if it turns out that I did not reflow it properly. Um, I'll just probably try the equivalent of the towel trick, and I'll let the system baste in its own juices, uh, and get hot enough. But that's not the reason why, uh, my PlayStation 3 might not work, or won't work at this stage. Um, it's not fixed yet. The reason why is because while I was almost done finishing the thing, I noticed the part of the ribbon was stuck underneath, uh, this plating that I had screwed down. And so I'm trying to remove it okay, without having to take all this extra stuff apart. I pull a little too hard, and BAM! We have this, like, two millimeter hole right in the mi right at the tip of the ribbon, and I'm not gonna bother connecting it, I'm just gonna assume this doesn't work. I mean, it's got a hole in it, how could it possibly? So, and naturally, these things are rare. Uh, not, not expensive, but rare. Uh, you know, th I have the old fat 60 model, and I want to keep that intact because it plays PS2 games. Um, uh, Radio Shack doesn't carry these. Uh, I, I, you can, I can, I found a few of these off eBay. Uh, and, you know, they're not terribly expensive. You can get one for, I could get one for like $4 with free shipping, so that was nice. The thing is, it would take three weeks to get here. You know, they said estimated time, about, like, November 14th. I didn't want to have to wait that long. That's a long fucking time. D plus, to, fi to find out this might not even work at all. You know, that's annoying. Oh, here I'm uh, reincarnating reincarnating uh, my witch doctor finally into a star mage. Mainly to learn star magic, and then eventually she will become my professor. Of course, the reincarnation cost is becoming pretty uh, severe at this point. Oh yeah, and you know I have Din, Nehru, and Favor. What do you think I'm gonna name the blonde-haired witch? I don't think any of you should be surprised I did that. I got another text message, it seems. Oh, yeah, my uh, my aunt. Uh, we're babysitting my aunt's new kitten, named Steve. It's a tiny little black cat. Um. Very affectionate, likes to, you know, rub its paws and like nibble on your fingers. You know, not not too painful. However, uh, uh, he he nicked me a little bit on my hand and a little bit on my chin. 
And, you know, now it's starting to itch like crazy. I think I might be slightly allergic to cats. Um, or possibly every time I go to my aunt's house, I, I get skin irritants. So I think it might be some sort of... Uh, she lives a bit deeper under the woods, so I think it might be some kind of uh, moss or algae that's around there. And, you know, she has dogs, too, that, you know, go outside and play. And if I pet them, and they are... They, I love... Uh, her dogs, so of course I play with them, and but I, I usually end up itching or get irritated eyes. So it's obviously something like that's bothering me. Oh, this is really bothering me. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, In your service, my lord. PlayStation Three ribbons. See, so, uh, so either wait for delivery or I'm fine. I'm. Uh, this guy at Radio Shack referred me to some special electronics store. You know, they didn't carry any, so. But he's gonna call a guy in New York that might still have one, and he'll let me know if I can get one from him or not. Possibly tomorrow. And if I can't, then well, I'm just gonna have to order the thing. And when I mentioned it, uh, you know, and he was asked, nice guy by the way, and he was asking me what my success rate with uh, fixing my consoles was, because he's like keeping it, he's keeping tabs in the back of his head, so he can tell other people like how likely it is that you could fix your your PS3 or 360. Uh, smart to do. Uh, here we go, passing access to the character world. I can't believe it just barely didn't pass. So, I'm gonna kick their asses. Make them regret doing that. Lead-tongued tyrant. I think that's from, uh, either passing bills, attempting bills, something like that. By the way, anyone else love this music? This is one of my favorite songs in the game. I actually uh, set this theme after I get access to the music store to be uh, the theme that plays in the character world. I mean, the theme that plays in the character world is pretty good too, but it got a little bit too grating too quickly, in my opinion. Okay, so, long story short, although I shouldn't really say that because I just gave you the long story. Uh, I'm waiting for a new PS3 Blue Ribbon. Uh, I'm going to uh, input it in, see if it works. If it doesn't, it's either because the clamp is broken or I need to reflow the system. I need to reflow the system again. And if it doesn't work after that, I probably have to get a new PS3. Maybe someone for Christmas will help me out. <laughs> Anyway, like, it, well, again, like I said, outside of this guy of four, um, there aren't many other games I can think of before the Christmas season that I need to play specifically on the PS3. Uh, I'll probably mainly be busy with Modern Warfare 3 for a while on the 360, and Zelda on the Wii, and, well, gee, other than that, if, if I were to get Battlefield 3, I would probably try it out. I should, I should probably... Uh, find a demo and see how it runs on my current um, rig. I mean, I only got the computer about six months ago, and well, has it really been that long already? I guess so. Um, and see how it and see how um, the settings hold up because I don't have the most powerful rig, but uh, I have plenty of RAM. I have um, the second best. Getting old choppy. Just a second. Alright, never mind. I found that. It, it wasn't even a problem. It was just. Um, this video clip is so big that it was still buffering while I was recording. So I just paused about 20 minutes and let it catch up. Uh, so. Crap, what was I even talking about? Ah, yes, that's right. Games to play. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'll be doing... I'll probably do Zelda as soon as I get it. I mean, that's bound to be great. Uh, we got... Um, I might sporadically upload some good, entertaining Modern Warfare 3 matches. Maybe even play the campaign, because campaign doesn't even take that long. You know, that... that, that the main campaign can be beaten in, what, maybe four or five hours? Roughly. So I can do that. Um, what other games are coming up for this P3? 
PS3 specifically. I know um, Uncharted 3 would be great, but I haven't even played the first two, so that's off the table. Another Assassin's Creed game, but I haven't played any of those games yet, so that's off the table. Arkham, uh, Arkham City could get for the 360 if I wanted, but uh, I mean, the good thing was I just beat um, Arkham Asylum before my PS3 went on the fritz. Uh, but I was trying to get all the Riddler challenges, which is pretty fun, actually. You know, uh, sometime, uh, I, I'm not sure what makes me decide to do a collect-a-thon or not. Like, you know, Super Mario or Banjo-Kazooie games, I, I would usually get everything. Uh, RPGs? Oh, man. <laughs> Very few RPGs have I ever gotten everything. Um, like, I, if I had to think about it, for RPGs, I, I know I've gotten everything in Chrono Trigger. Uh, played that game multiple times. I had gotten... Uh, what's another one? Uh, Final Fantasy 12. I beat everything but Omega Mark 12. I even beat Yez, Matt, and Zodiac. Not exactly easy. Uh, might have gotten everything in Paper Mario 2. Oh, Golden Sun. Uh, got all the summons and all the Jin and all the weapons in both 1 and 2. Uh, and leveled up my character to level 99. Although I don't ever think I got around to that in the third game. Third game wasn't that great, to be honest. Uh, pretty, uh, somewhat of a letdown after waiting, like, seven, eight years for that game to come out. Uh, what other games? I play a lot of RPGs. <laughs> um, God, F Final Fantasy X 2, I always mess up on getting the mascot dress spheres every single time, and I've tried three whole playthroughs to get it. So, I think I'm going to be trying that again anytime soon. Um, yeah, RPGs are hard to get everything. Uh, Dragon Quest IX? Forget about it. Star Ocean IV? Forget about it. Those just are not happening, and for reasons I'd rather not get into at the moment. Oh, jeez. Wow, all this just to open the character world. Um, I will start talking about that as soon as um, I show you. It's funny, in this guy of three, it used to be a, uh, a pretty with an afro, for whatever reason. Oh, this guy. And um, it would... For whatever reason, every time the it would appear or disappear randomly, and it would reappear in a different location in the hub world every time. Uh, they got rid of that nonsense, thank God. All right, uh, all right, yeah. Let's start talking about the character world. There we go. There he is. Nice little pretty. character world is very annoying to go through. I prefer the item world much more. And, um, here's why. After we go over. <sighs> Making sure I got some skills, but also, uh, I get some mana, heal, save, the usual. Um, at the very beginning, there, it, the character world is very difficult for a number of reasons. Uh, one, mana costs are extremely high to improve pretty much anything. Uh, the second reason is the enemies in the love in the character world are based on the level of the character you go into it with, of the character you go into. So say you're going into your level 1,000 Valvatores, but all your other characters are only level 100, say. You're going to be fighting level 1,000 enemies, roughly. You know, they'll get stronger as you go deeper into the character world from there. So you only have one character that can really take them on, and that can be pretty difficult. Uh, so you need, and you know, of course, the disparity 
discrepancy is, uh, or I say the problem with that is, if you want to go in at a lower level so that the enemies are weaker and the character world is easier to, uh, complete, uh, you're probably not going to have enough mana at that point. And, um... So, what you either have to do is, you either have to, you can buy mana potions, in, which you can find in the item world, and, you know, you use them on, you can get a few hundred mana that way, you know, that could help. Um, or you can just stick them in the pyramid group and just leech off of other characters and get mana from destroying enemies. Right, so, here are the things you can improve in the character world. You can increase your movement, your jump power, your throw range your critical hit ratio, and you can inherit skills and abilities from other characters. Um, movement and th throwing can only be in Oh, and counter hits. I've got counter hits. Movement, counter, and throw range can only be increased twice per character. Um, I believe it's 5,000 for each, and after you increase it once, the next time will be 50,000. So quite a bit higher um as you can see it said average and then hosted zero out of two out of <laughs> critical hit apparently i decided to increase her critical rate um the main i i guess the main reason why i didn't have enough mana to get anything else and this is this is why i hate the character world it's so cramped clustered with enemies and geo blocks nothing but geo blocks no geo panels just blocks and the main reason this is annoying is traversal is a bitch you're usually blocked off or even just surrounded with enemies and yeah, this is the song that plays yeah, it's nice to hear it again but it, it does uh, great on your nerves after a bit Alright, so, uh, so, yeah, um, as you can see, and the blocks can be in stacks, and, you know, when the blocks are that high, you need, characters need good movement and very good jump to make it over these blocks and progress normally. Uh, you need a lot of characters with good area of effect attacks. Uh, so, magic is king in, in this world. Uh, odds, more than likely, unless you made two... Yeah, we'll be saying this a lot. Um, unless you saw, unless you made the uh, masked hero with the chicken heart ability to just run through enemies and knock them off the uh, the gate, um, you're gonna have to rely on magic and throwing and you know the Mothman. And that's this is the other reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get attacked. Which health does he have? Holy crap! Okay. Wow, about half. So I don't remember what level Desco is, but that's about the level of the enemies, and you know, Val is slightly stronger than her at the moment, I believe. Okay, 90. Okay, never mind. If she's 99, then that means Desk goes around that level. Okay, um, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, and, um, there are some new mechanics in this from Disguise 3 that I just didn't understand for a while. Um, the base floor underneath the Geo blocks, um, uh, are collapsible up to the very bottom. So, uh, and uh, this, this is kind of hard to explain. Uh, say there are four stacks of the base floor. At the end of every turn, one floor, I mean, the top tile Ready for me? of the floor will disappear and collapse. Every turn. Um, until it's down to one. If you, and there are ways to manipulate this. Anytime you attack an enemy or a geoblock, even if you don't defeat them, that is standing 
on a base level greater than one, the floor will collapse beneath them one floor and they will take some minor damage. So say you attack an orc on top of a two base floor, um, the floor will collapse beneath them in addition to the damage you did and he will take some damage. See right now this floor has a base floor of two with geo panels on top of them. If I attack any blocks, um, the floor beneath it will collapse. You can use this to your advantage to try to clear the geo blocks and create combos. Um, and the reason you want to do this is the game isn't so clear about it, but every time you destroy all the geo blocks on a single floor, the mana cost for obtaining your benefit will decrease by 5%. And um, you can, so you can decrease the cost of a skill upgrade by uh, as much as 45%. 45 because the mystery gate that lets you go in um, to the see the specialist that increases your stat. Oh, that time the floor didn't decrease. Maybe it's every time you defeat an enemy? Or it's because I'm... Uh, after I watch the video, I'll be able to confirm a few. But yeah, on the ninth floor, that's where the gate appears, and that's where you have to go in to increase your uh, attributes, like your movement range, or your jump range, or inherit skills. Um, you know, maybe it wasn't attacking enemies, maybe it was only blocks. I'll see you shortly. I haven't gone through the character world in a while, that's because I... <laughs> At one point, I went through the character world, like, for six hours straight, just increasing my character's abilities and learning skills. It's it's a real grind. Okay. So, yeah, destroy all the blocks on the floor, and you will increase your... I'm sorry, decrease the mana cost by 5%. So, if you're going to increase movement, which is 5,000 the first time, and you clear all the blocks in a single floor, you just increase it by 5%, which means the cost will now be 4,750. Uh, it'll decrease by 10%, and it'll go down to 4,500. Uh, and also, every time you destroy Geo Blocks, you gain a percentage of mana for the character you're going into. So, if you might have noticed when I first went into the character world with Desco, um, I was a few mana short of the requirement of 2,000. Uh, that was okay because the game still lets you do it because the game knows A, you can obtain mana by defeating enemies, B, you can obtain mana or, or by destroying blocks, and C, you can reduce the mana cost by destroying all the blocks on a single floor. It's just a matter of can you do it enough by the time you go into the mystery gate? And even if and even if you can't, it just means you can't buy it. You can still go through the character world and complete it. Why would you want to do that? Well, here's the other main benefit of the character world: increasing your character's aptitudes. Aptitudes are those. Okay, see, we got a little comma going because the floor wasn't quite even, and there are exploding barrels. Uh, the nice thing is your character can never die from the floor collapsing underneath you. Their HP will be reduced to 1. Although this also makes the enemies much easier to beat themselves. And yes, aptitude increasing. One of the other reasons you need to go through the character world. Uh, aptitudes are those percentages that affect the bonuses you get from equipment and weapons. Uh, that I went over with every single character you might have noticed. Uh, minus the bonus characters, which I'll be doing soon. Um, every floor you clear... Um, you know, actually, there is some discrepancy in how much your aptitudes increase by. But generally, um, it is one... It is one aptitude per floor you, uh, clear. But there are some ways to gain additional aptitude increases. Uh, depending on what you do in the character world, you can make uh, special blocks, geo blocks appear that once you destroy them, you can, uh, it increases your aptitude gain by one. 
There are also special uh, enemies that you can destroy for after big games as well. There is a chance of... They used to be called delin delinquents? Is that what they were called? You know, I can't remember what they were called in 3. But basically, there's a chance of a clone of the enemy, of, of your character, appearing. And it'll have an and it'll have a yellow bar beneath it. Ready for me? Uh, destroy that character, the clone of your character, and you will gain an aptitude increase. Uh, just hope it isn't your strongest character. It might be kind of tough to defeat. <laughs> um, the other, and you know, there and there are exploits that used to be the only way to clone uh, equipment in the Sky of Three with the puppy paw stick item. Of course, now we have the shop glitch in this game, however, that will eventually be patched by Nippo Nichi because it was patched in the Japanese version. So dupe while you can. Uh, but yeah, defeat them, gain an aptitude bonus. And finally, on the final floor, there will be an equivalent of the item god, which was uh, a president? It's like either a pres president or a chairman. And this is... You know what, where's my guide? It might actually have a section on the character world. Not bad. Underneath my husk of a PS3. Okay, let's see here. Should have a character world section. Error world. It's not very big. And of course, it has false information about this. But anyway, uh, yeah. Depending on your, did you notice when you can create a character or re create a character or reincarnate? You have the option of choosing like good for nothing or genius depending on the mana and you gain more uh, bonus increases. Yeah. Well, um, genius is the highest and you get the most stat increases. As a genius, there are other benefits. Um, depending on your level, that's how many times you can go into the character world per reincarnation. If you notice, it said 0 out of 2 for Desco because she is an average uh, level because I haven't reincarnated her yet. That means I can go into the character world twice before I need to reincarnate to go into it more. Um, if you're a genius, you can go in three times before you need before you have to reincarnate. And this also affects the boss on the final floor. It's, it's either a uh, oh jeez, it, it's, it's not a president. I don't know what it is because I always fight presidents because I always make genius level. But the point is, when you defeat them, you gain an aptitude bonus, and if it's, you're a genius and you defeat the president, you gain the highest bonus, which is, like, I think three. Three extra aptitude increases. And there's something else, uh, that the game, but, uh, that the game itself didn't tell you, but after reading on the boards, uh, if you are, try to go into the character world at a minimum of level 80. Because that is where you will get the maximum amount of aptitude increases. Ah, that block right there is a null block. If I destroy it, all the base the base floor, like I said, will collapse automatically by one on the spot. And you can use this to create combos or to damage enemies. It's my turn. Of course, there's a... No, that's not a null block. That's a, a special block. What is that? Of course, I'm just ignoring it right now. But you know what null blo blocks look like. If you actually destroy the null block, um, all the ba all the base floors will immediately go down to one. So if you have a base floor of five, it'll go down to one, and all the and all the enemies on the floor will take massive damage. Um, so yeah. Uh, be a minimum of level 80 before you go into the character world because that's where you'll get the most aptitude increases. And finally, when you exit the character world from the from either entering the final gate or destroying all the enemies on the last floor, uh, it's a prism. That's what it's called, a prism. Um, 
Each aptitude increase will be added to a stat randomly. You cannot allocate it, unfortunately. So, I can't put 15 aptitude increases into Valvatoris's attack aptitude, for example. The game, it's random. However, uh... The, however, the game can does generally try to dis uh, distribute them somewhat evenly, but again, it is random. So if, if you get like, mostly in defense and resistance, you know, after three times in a row, maybe it'll start to add to the other ones instead. But, you know, like I said, you just can't focus it. Uh, this can be a problem if you plan on getting your main character's 300% aptitudes, which is the maximum, uh, because the game can still alloca allocate um, aptitude increases to uh, aptitudes that are already maxed out, and they will, in essence, be wasted. So say you have 300 aptitudes in everything but speed, and you have 299 in speed. You could theoretically go through the character world and not gain an aptitude in speed at all. It can happen. Uh, so, <laughs> watch out for that. Uh, you know, that can suck. Of course, I, I'm curious as to how many of you would actually bother to make 300 aptitude characters. Um, because, like I said, there are nice people on the GameFAQs boards that are giving out um, androids with maximum aptitudes, abilities, and skills. I happen to capture a few, so I can make any generic class with maximum aptitudes that I want. However, you can't capture <laughs> main characters, so if you want Valga 300 aptitudes, you're gonna have to do it yourself. Buckle down. Same with all the upcoming special characters and DLC characters. Is that my tree? I might have accidentally gotten to a cat. It is. No, it's an enemy <laughs> heavy knight. I thought I was attacking myself for whatever reason. And one important thing to note. If you use a Mr. Gensi's exit, you will not receive any aptitude increases at all. Here I come! And unfortunately for me, I did not have the energy left to finish the last floor of this. I could not beat the president and get into the gate. So I had to exit or else get a game over. So no aptitude increases for Desco, unfortunately. Uh, she does, however, end up getting her increase to her critical hit rate, but everything else was wasted. There. Ooh. There. And unlike the item world, there are no mystery gates along the way. So the character world becomes a lot more monotonous very quickly. I, I, I actually, I, I hate the character world to be frank. I mean, the benefits are slow, but so very important. They really start to make a difference. Like, increasing your character's movement by one or another character's throw range, uh, it pays off in dividends, especially in X-Dimension maps, where placement can make all the difference. Jump and critical hit rate aren't that important, uh, but even counter rates can be nice because they increase the amount of hits you do in the heart cannon group. So those can be pretty important. Are you sick of the music yet? Nah. Ah, uh, see, that's, that's the special aptitude sphere. I don't know why I call it a sphere, it's clearly a block, although I guess it's a sphere and a block. Oh, and the other thing is, uh, there are also ability spheres. Um, so your character can learn a random ability by, uh, beating that along the way. Many of my characters have received totally random and extra abilities, uh, as such, such things as Increase aptitudes from equipping shoes. Uh, e canceler, which nullifies um, the elemental bonus damage. Uh, there, there are hun There are a lot of 
generic abilities you can learn. And so, whoever made the level 300 androids with the... So, the, th the perfect androids with all the abilities, they went through the character world a lot. So, if you're gonna leech, if you're gonna mooch off them, thank the guy personally on the boards. Game facts, that's what I go to for a lot of this information. So, this isn't all, all this information isn't research of myself. A lot of, uh, a lot of it, the thanks has to go to them. So what I'm doing is, I'm obviously taking my turn, my time, to destroy as many, all the geo blocks to lower the, the cost. And remember, if you destroy all the enemies on the floor before you destroy the geo blocks, it will count. Chili fight! Rock, paper, scissors. Um, so you can... Oh yeah, and the thing about clearing blocks, if a block is touching another block of the same color, you cannot lift it. You can only lift up a block uh, touching either a different color or nothing. Also, you can lift up a stack of two different colored blocks, by the way, so you can use that to make certain combos. Destroy blocks by throwing the same colored block and touching um, similar colored or just eliminating its HP. Pretty simple, right? <sighs> and because I'm running out of things to talk about, I'm going to read the guide's excerpt on the character world. Although I don't know why I'm bothering, it's probably going to have tons of um, misinformation. But what the hell, I got time to burn. The Carol world is set up in a similar way to item world. When you're there, each map is randomly generated and there are many monsters that try to stop you from reaching various gateways. The paths are often shorter, but more heavily blocked than in item world. Experience and mana are much easier to farm, though it's still faster to abuse high-end maps like Mount of Ordeals 4. Instead, people come here to raise aptitudes for their characters, and to trade various skills between their people. Don't come here until you have a healthy amount of mana to spread, because it gets used like water. Uh, to... Nope, that's wrong. You don't need to... It says you need a minimum of three re reincarnations to open the character world, but really it's only one. It just has to be a total of 99 scored levels, minimum, and then pass the bill. Let's see, character world gives the target character several major bonuses. Completing the 10th floor raises random aptitudes for that character, making it possible, making it possible become quite a bit stronger over time. That's not grammatically correct. The character president, the gatekeeper of the 10th floor, also provides an attribute bonus, so you should always kill him. Here I go. Although you should say her, because president is always an android. In addition to these things, there is always a mystery gate when you first reach the 9th floor of the world. Go into this mystery gate to spend mana on some aspect of your character. The attribute that you improve is chosen when you first enter character world. This is the way to trade abilities and skills between characters. As long as two characters are in the same group, form evil symbol, they can teach each other abilities and skills. The mana cost for this is painful, but the effects are worthwhile. You can also improve movement rate, critical chances, and other character attributes. And yes, um, when you're going to learn character skills or abilities, it will be ten times the cost of what it was to purchase it normally. So, if you want to learn Big Bang from Fenric, which costs 4,800 mana to teach him, it's going to cost 48,000 mana to inherit it from him. Though each character can only go through character world up to three times, depending on the character rank, this limit isn't as unfair as it seems. When you re reincarnate, the limit is reset. Doing so allows characters to, through, to go through character world again and again, though the mana costs sure add up. Look for managers to stack onto a strong weapon. This is a great way to go through Carol World because you can make up the mana that you're spending. Uh, managers are an innocent that increase your mana gain. Look 
how hectic those combos can become. Yeah, so every time a block disappears, or an enemy disappears, the, the floor beneath it will collapse. Um, also, if you might have might have noticed there are no items in the bonus list in the Carol world. You only gain experience and money. Um, so if you go into a really high level Carol world, um, you have some weak ass level one char uh, characters in your party and destroy all the enemies, just bring them out of the gate and have them stand around and they'll gain experience from the bonus gauge. Nice! Let's see, how much time is left in this video? Here I come. About a half hour. Holy crap. <laughs> I'll be taking questions now about the character world. Any questions at all? No? Well, you probably have a shitload of questions actually, but I can't see you. Why do I ask that? <laughs> Let's see. Um. Uh, let's burn up some time. Let's read up some of the other uh, sections of the guide I never went into. For example, here is a list of the evil symbols in Disgaea 4. Um, doesn't say how to um, access them. It just says what they do. For example, okay, Heart Cannon. Uh, the group united by strong bonds of friendship. When a member is within a certain range, they will perform a support attack. I'm, I've gone over that before in detail. Uh, Babel Tower, a historical monument that's like a maze. It is said that no one has ever reached the top. This enables dual throw when part of a tower. Uh, honestly, I don't know how to use dual throw, even after I've accessed it in Disgaea 3. Uh, I, I know it's necessary to clear a particular map in the X Dimension, uh, but I never got around to it, so I can't really explain how that works. Legendary Tree. A very old giant tree in Hades. Confess your love under this tree to get a happy ending. You can develop a relationship with the leader. Uh, this is how you gain access to the extra epilogues. Uh, you need to create a certain character relationship with Valvatoris and all the other characters. And this is done by putting them in the group and then performing a certain action. Like, if you need to be... Uh, it, not, it wasn't best friends, but it was like... I forget what it was called, but with Fenric, put him in the Fenric, Fenric in that, and Valvatoris as leader, and then you have to perform 10 team attacks. And then they will get that relationship. And the relationship has other bonuses, aside from unlocking the ending. I mean, you can do it with any character. Like, I know there's one, like, a teacher one or something, where you get the teacher-mentor relationship, or whatever it's called, um, and you establish it, uh, either the teacher or the student can use any of the other characters' non-special skills from anywhere on the map. Pretty handy. Alright, next one. Aura Pyramid, my favorite. One of the Netherworld's most mysterious spots. All members will gain 50% of the mana earned by a member who defeats an enemy. Yes, sir. Super useful. Woo! <laughs> Alright. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> no, I'm not gonna cut that out. You have to listen to me cough, bitches. <coughs> Alright. Uh, Nether Express. Uh, very popular among children. Create train stations on the map and Iron World to dispatch units from there. Uh, I have not utilized that. I have no idea how it works. Let's see. Beast Lab! A magic change in dual and demon fusion research lab. The user of either command will receive stat bonuses on their equipment. Nice. Um, put monsters in here that you're going to be using this command with a lot. For some uh, stat bonuses. Uh, base. <laughs> Valvatores is party base, the center of Hades where hot lava flows. Doesn't have any effects. The only reason you use it in the beginning is because people in the same group, again, if you unlock the character world, you can learn skills that way off each other. But also, actually, I think that's about it. Uh, Hall Monitor. 
A mysterious facility from an evil academy of another netherworld extorts items from senators by patting them down. Haven't tried it, but sounds pretty straightforward. Ah, these levels are the best where there's only one color. What you do is attack a specific block to separate... To separate it from the others. See, what I did was I made that red block a single one, so now I can lift it up. Now, all I have to do is pick it up and throw it in... And throw it into the... Touch the other red ones, and they'll all disappear, like that. Unfortunately, they weren't connected at the very end, but I can do it again. So the, these are the floors that are easiest to clear all the blocks of. All right, let's see. Not gonna lose. Uh, General Advisor. Not gonna lose. Uh, a memo a memorial dedicated to your comrades. Ten percent of the base stats of defeated members will be added to other available members. Hmm. That's kind of hard to take advantage of. I can think of a lot of better uh, groups to put my characters. In. I mean, I could say you could put uh, weak enemy, weak characters in there and have them die on purpose to gain the, the bonus. But think about it: if they're that weak to die so quickly, you're not going to be gaining much of a stat bonus now, are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, item World Radar. A research group that observes the item world. They actually don't even need the radar to see anything. This triggers more events on the minimap. That means more pirates, more spears, more mystery gates, shit like that. You want this. You really do. Fusion Weapon Lab. Any monster type unit here will be able to fuse magic change to use magic change after they conduct a demon fusion. Nice! Pretty sure you all want that. Not to mention it's outright necessary to abuse Cave of Ordeal, Mountain Ordeals 4. Yeah. I believe to get it, you need to destroy a level 100 creature or higher with a fused monster. So just find a level 100 creature, make a giant Desco, kill it. Now you can pass the spell in the center. However, it can be pretty difficult to pass. So watch out for that. Uh, Dual Dojo. Any monster type unit here will be able to conduct the second match change. Dual match change. So, um, any so after you've used match change with a character, any monster in this group will be able to match change again onto the same character. Nice to have. So you and yes, you can do double you can do dual giant magic change. Best way to level up monsters, bar none. How do you get that? I think you have to defeat a level 1,000 enemy with either a with either uh, a magic change or a giant magic change weapon. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was a level 1,000 enemy. So that will come in time. Uh, let's see. Then we have pentake.hades.org. Hmm. An organization that propagates Pentake, a game originating in the human world. Knock away an enemy by throwing an ally at them. I guess that could be useful. Does it just knock them straight back? Yeah, actually, that, I guess that could be useful uh, in certain maps. I, I haven't used it, but... You never know. Campaign board. To win the evil election, they will do anything. Members will be sent to Senate hearings. It makes it easier to pass bills. Uh, this is both good and bad, for reasons you might not be initially aware of. Uh, yes, if you put some characters in this group, uh, they will vote in sentence and most, li and most likely will vote yes. However, they can vote no. I've seen it happen, for whatever reason. The reason this is bad is, if you want to pass the bill afterwards, um, your characters will be in the group, will be in the Senate, and it counts against your deployment, so you can't deploy from the base panel. So a lot of your characters will be stranded by themselves, away from your other characters, and in the midst of all these enemies. So, if you plan to force a bill, don't use this, because even your good characters can be uh, gang-raped by all the enemies there. If, if the bill is not going to pass, take uh, disable this ability. 
if the bill is in the 30s, is above 25%, I should say, put characters in this, use cell phones, bribe senators, and try to get a, a pass that way. If it didn't work, reset, try again. You can get lucky with this setup. But if it's something like 1% where it's just not going to pass and you have to persuade by force, don't use it. Uh, let's see, Information Bureau. Uh, the place where all rumors in the netherworld are collected. Decreases the damage of a special move previously executed on another Bless member. Me. I don't get it. Uh, Carnage Master. Members are able to fuse with a unit who has already fused during the same battle. Demon fusion up to four units. Wow. I want that. I don't, I don't have that yet. I don't know how to unlock it. I need to look that up. But super fusion. Super magic change fusion. So, wow, the possibilities. Up to four units on a... S you can level up eight monsters and then dual magic change onto a single character. Damn, that's awesome. Uh, Rosen Queen. They came to Hades to sell souvenir items. <laughs> Sorry about that. The items change depending on which evil area they're placed on. Um, this just allows you to buy very simple items like muscles, belts, shoes, and sir, uh, it's it's not super useful. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, no trunk is snap. Alrighty. Uh, the Blight House. A place where all the boss level demons live. Increase the stats by 10% when a cabinet member unit is placed. What's the cabinet? Uh, that's that thing where when you level up you gain, uh, extra stat right, increases right, when you level up in certain levels. You have to place your characters in that group. And if you place right, those characters into the Blight House group, you will gain additional stat bonuses when you level up. Uh, very nice to have when you're leveling up, when you're power leveling. Uh, discipline room. Dominates dominance that enforce discipline in the discipline room. Members will torture enemies to find treasure or add them to the party. Uh, you need this if you want to capture enemies. Or if you want to discipline them to find the X dimension, uh, the parts to P, Flans, or X to gain access to the land of carnage. So you only need a single character in this group, but you absolutely need uh, access to this group. Okay, and next we have the training ground. Do my best. Uh, training ground for the Prinnies. Not just the Prinnies. Um, all members gain 10% of the experience earned by a member who defeats the enemy. 10% uh, might not sound like a lot, but this makes it easy to level up uh, weaker units when destroying... You know, when you're destroying level quad 9 enemies, 10% of that experience goes a long way for the little guys. Um, you can make it up in such a... configure it in such a way to maybe overlap two or three of the same squares with the Aura Pyramids so you can reach experience and mana, which, of course, I endorse. Uh, Defense Fortress, a durable wall that will withstand any attack. In, ad in addition to activating Protect, members take an adjacent ally's damage. I have no idea what the Protect command is or how it works. Don't ask me. It's not something I've needed. I don't know how useful it is. But I've never liked the concept of some of one character taking damage from another. Um, automatically. I, I would prefer to use that ability myself. Like in the, uh, Final Fantasy IV, when you can make, um, when, when you're the paladin, you can use cover and you just automatically take hits from another character. I, I don't like it. I never like that automatically. What if I don't want it to happen? Uh, sacrificial Altar, their motto is, what's yours is mine. The leader will absorb a member's HP to revive from death. And finally, Nether Shoe Lab. Researchers for shoes. Increases movement, but only in a straight line. Members will only move in the direction that they were thrown. Uh, I don't know how much it increases movement by, and not being able to 
Walking corners sounds annoying. Uh, there are plenty of ways to manipulate your movement already. Just use the shoot trick. And that's it for the main. Symbols. All in all, I, ma I mainly use our pyramid and training grounds and uh, the fusion. Uh, the, the magic change abilities. Uh, some other stuff is used. Lighthouse. Try to take advantage of Lighthouse if you can. Let's see, what else can we go for? Here I come! The floor is this. Uh, the next run in the item world I make is a successful one where I actually gain aptitude God, increases. Bless me. But uh, I'm probably not gonna upload God, that. One run through the Carol world is enough. Ugh. I mean, look how long this is taking. And of course, I learn my lesson later and I just turn off enemy effects and character effects. It just takes too fucking long. Yeah, they're cool, but that's what skill exhibitions are for. Um, here's a list of innocents, which are the got little critters that hide in items. Uh, I can read that list real quick. It's in the guide, might as well. Uh, Dietitian adds to your HP stack. Master adds to SP. Gladiator adds to attack. Sentry adds to defense. Tutor adds to intelligence. Coach to speed. Marksman to hit. Physician to resistance. And now there are these dual status um, statisticians that are fantastic. Uh, you can only find them by reverse pirating, but they're very worthwhile. Sprinter adds bonus points to attack and speed. Yeah. Muscle Man adds to attack and HP. So I mean, if you have access to these, you should like. All, there's no excuse not to use them over the single stat innocents. Uh, nerds increase your intelligence and SP. Hard workers increase your attack and intelligence. Paint, uh, patience increase defense and resistance. Pugilist adds attack and hit, although that's ironic because a pugilist uses your hands and this is the innocent you would want to stack on the bows. And sniper adds to hit and speed. That's, uh, that's obviously a gun uh, innocent. Uh, let's see. Alchemists inflict poison status when you attack. Um, the more of these innocents up to, I think, 100 that you equip, and that's the percentage chance you have of, of doing that ailment when you attack with it. Uh, hypnotist adds sleep, witch doctor adds paralysis, amnesiac adds amnesia, and the gangster adds depraved. Pretty good. Ah, professional. This increases your hit, uh, critical rate upon attack. Yes, you can make it if you have enough of these where you'll have a 100% critical hit rate. Uh, so these are definitely worthwhile to get. You should have one of them on... You should probably have one maxed out professional on each one of your characters. On one of your characters... Okay. On each one of one of your characters' equipment. Here I go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Collector, shifts the item's rarity. Uh, why do you want your rarity to match? Well, if you're two, you have, um, for every two matching rarity items, uh, you have equipped, you will receive a 10% bonus to your stats overall. So, if all four of your equipment has matching rarity, you will receive a 30% bonus to your stats. That adds up a lot. And the collector, if you put one on, I think increases, not decreases, the rarity by one. Uh, overall, I, I wouldn't bother with these. Just, just make sure you capture or find the correct um, rarity you want. For, I mean, pretty much all the equipment you're going to be using you get from stealing from, uh, from item gods. And you can reset for those. So just get it right the first time so you don't have to wait an instant slot. 
Uh, let's see. <coughs> the pharmacist increases your poison resistance. Coffee maker, sleep resistance. Medicine man, paralysis. Psychologist, amnesia. Social worker, depraved. Yeah, that's it. Uh, firefighters increases your fire resistance. Aeronauts increase your wind resistance. And cryophiles increase your water resistance. These are the magic innocence you want if you're going to exploit the elemental force ability like I managed, like I mentioned that uh, magic knights have. These abilities are kind of almost essential if you want maximum elemental spell damage. Uh, let's see. Ah, now these guys, these are really important. Uh, these are equipment specialists. The fist fighter example, you gain more ability when equipping a fist type weapon. Uh, basically, these innocents have a maximum of 500. After that, they don't work anymore. And you gain 1% increase to all of the stats that weapon gives when it's equipped. So, um, have a level 300 Cosmo Infinity? Stick a level 500 uh, fist fighter onto that, and you will receive a. And your stats will increase five times. That's enormous. These specialists are kind of essential for the maximum weapons for huge stat bonuses. Fences are for swords. Lances are for spears. Eros is for the bow. Deadeye is for the gun. Lumberjack is for the axe. Cane Man is for the staff. And Monster Hub. Hunter is for beast type weapons. And the Guardian uh, is for armor or accessories. Basically everything other than weapons. I love that. Take that, slime! Ooh! Yay! Yay! Look at all that hell and money. Ah, there's the mystery gate. No need to clear the blocks if you can't, unless you can, really easily. Uh, just gotta make a little tower, throw yourself over there, and you're good to go. Uh, the broker! Obtain more money upon defeating enemies. This is not really necessary since you never really have to grind for hell. Grind for experience or mana, and you'll gain hell automatically. Uh, broker! Uh, sorry, I just said that. Statisticians! Obtain more experience upon defeating enemies. Essential. E fucking essential. Um, you can have a maximum combined three level 300 statistician. Have one of these on any of your equipment or armor, and you will gain three times experience. However, you can have multiple level 300 statisticians, and the maximum experience gain you can get is plus 4,900 percent experience. So, with that kind of boat boost, ah, see, required mana, 1700, that's from clearing a few floors. My current mana is now 9000, so I get it pretty easily. Not a problem. Thanks, buddy, and now I'm out of here. I'll buy you. So yeah, with 4500% experience from statisticians, and clearing uh, Mount Ordeals 4 in the Land of Carnage, you can get to level Quad 9 in either 2... In two to three runs that's super fast so if you want to cut down tens of hours of grinding get yourself some fucking statisticians again uh, reverse pirating only so kill a few combine them dupe them combine them again dupe the maximum put them on some equipment and keep them there uh, manager obtain more mana points uh, you know, I didn't think this would have been necessary. However, if you get, you're going to get to the point where reincarnating characters other than your main characters, the mana cost will be 99,999. Sorry about that. Or was it 999,999? I can't remember. The point is, it's a lot, and um, that's that might actually take a bit to to gather to reincarnate. So you might want. Maybe one or two sets of managers. Well, it couldn't hurt. Mentor! Learn skills faster. Uh, then, as in your weapon skills. Remember, the more you use a weapon, uh, the more... Uh, the, uh, 
the, the more the ability goes up. Muscle slime. Get jiggly with it. Although that wasn't my slime. Yeah, I'm starting to hurt now. Um, yeah, use skills more. SP cost goes up a little bit, but your power also goes up, and I think you can go up to 99. Um, yeah, these are probably worthwhile to get to increase your skills faster. I don't know what the maximum effect is, but they'd be worth to get. Fusion, uh, lose, lose. Increase the experience earned by the attacker who defeats you. I don't know why that's useful. Fusion Lover increases the fusion effect. The stats uh, gained by fusion. Yeah, stick this on a monster. Magic Change Lover increases the magic change effect. Stick this on a character to gain much better uh, magic change stats. Uh, mediator. A mediator between two innocents. Uh, I don't know how that works. Teacher. Also don't know how that works. Teacher of Innocence. I think you have to run into this thing in the item world Innocent Town. I'm not sure. Enforcer! These are a great addition. Kicks out Unruly Innocence. Uh, basically, if you find an, an, an Enforcer, it's already subdued and its level is 10. So, uh, you can move this to any item you want, and normally you need to... You can only remove subdued innocence that you kill in the item world. With this I with this uh, innocent, you can go into a you can move it into an uh, item you haven't gone into yet with the unruly innocence and move them automatically. It's great. Um, and wow, that slime is really taking punishment. And uh, you know, this is useful when you're going to make a perfect. Uh, weapon from the beginning and every time you move an unruly innocent with the enforcer in place uh, It reduces by one. So yeah, I was just sick of the character world. I did not have the energy to finish it um, I'm saving I'm done That's it. Uh, I guess I'll continue this innocent list later. Thanks for watching the character world However, there is one pretty important thing I neglected to mention I'll mention it in my next video. Thanks for watching.